Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the LLP Joint Hour. On this week's episode, I get the fortune enough to sit down with a old guy I know for work, guy who unfortunately had to spend years with me in the service and had to live with me in birthing, Mr. and a one funny motherfucker, Mr. Tim Mathis. What is going on, Tim? Hello, everybody. Sorry for the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, it's fine, man. I know you're night owl anyways, aren't you, with this, with your hours? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We uh, we work nights and then uh, usually during the day. Uh, well, I've been uh, been going to the gym. I actually lost uh, a ton of weight. Um, good good so for that's you, usually man. What I've been doing during the day is going to the gym, but uh, kind of hurt my back a couple of weeks ago. So I've been taking it easy the last few days. You mean you're getting old like all of us? Right. Yeah. Um, that's the excuse. But uh, no, I, I really just went too hard on the lower back machine uh, and uh, pulled my lower back a little bit, but it's fine now. That was, it hurt for about a week. You know how that goes. Oh, you have no idea how well that goes. I look like a question mark or a question mark for about four months last year. I, oh, yeah. I do have a major spasm that sits on top of my sciatic nerve. So when it, right, and when it fires up, it, I'm down for the count for about a month. Like, Yeesh. I'll be out. I'll, I'll call you guys later. I'll see you at work. You know, one of those days they're like, oh, what'd you do? I'm like, oh, I was reaching my fridge to get a beer and my back went out. And that's how it goes. So I was talking to somebody that we both know the other mm-hmm. day. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm like, Tim's coming. I'm like, I asked him to come on this joint hour with me. I haven't talked to him forever. I'm like, man, I'm trying to remember Tim from the ship. I'm like, I always know Tim is a nice guy. I always know Tim was very funny. I'm like, and he always hung out with Haji. That's all I know about Tim. And I'm like, and he goes, and this mutual friend went, I asked him offline about the Buffalo Bills sweater that he had. Yeah. And I'm like, why? He goes, he'll know. He'll know what I'm talking about. So. Oh, yeah. I had a, I bought it from a Goodwill somewhere. Um, but I had a, um, and remember this was what, 2002, 2003, I guess, when we were doing the South America stuff. I had a, um a sweater, a black sweater, and it was just a Buffalo Bills 1994 uh, pre-Super Bowl. I think it was their um, championship. Uh, I guess they would be the AFC or NFC? AFC. AFC, yeah. It was an AFC championship uh, sweatshirt, you know, celebrating uh, yet another one of their – One of their four? Yeah. So it's like, you know, you know how it ends. But Mm -hmm. – yeah, it was interesting. So yeah. he was like, "Dude, you gotta ask about this sweater." I'm like, "Did, did he do something in this sweater? Did he steal oh, it I just, from I, someone?" I, I took the sweater. I you, I wore the sweater all over South America. Um, you mean one like of the thousand degrees? We that was my. It was my. It was my sweater for port. Yeah. So even it was when, fun. Even the one that we were going was a thousand degrees out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really weird, but it was it was it was cool. Dude, that's fun. It, yeah. No, I just remember the because uh, that mutual friend just retired from the service. Oh, really? Yeah, out of the I don't know why. You know what? It's Bill Sheets. You know what? Fuck you, Bill. I'm not saying your name. Oh, I'm saying Sheets. your name anyways. Okay. Yeah, I'm like I'm saying your name anyways. He's like, don't say my name. I'm saying it anyways. Uh, Fuck you, Bill. That's funny. Yeah, he don't just retired from the army. You know, the national. Oh yeah. Army. So, whatever. Anyways, we're not here to talk about him, dude. Thank you for coming on here again. I appreciate it. Uh, no, no problem. So. I want to know how did you end up in stand up? I know you cried. Someone told me, like, Tim used to joke about being going to become a stand up comedian. How did you end up doing it? Like, that's the most intriguing part to me is when people are like, I'm going to go up on stage and do this. <laughs> well, uh, I'd always wanted to do it. But then um, when, I, when I got out of the Navy, I went to uh, radio, which I did radio for um, working behind the scenes and on air for about four years before I did uh, stand up. The um, the stand up stuff was basically because I got laid off from radio. Uh, this was the whole. It was all two thousand eight oh nine stuff. You know all the layoffs oh, yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah. And so I said, you know what? Uh, it was uh, late oh nine or, or early two thousand ten. Went ahead and started doing comedy, and I was better. I mean, not not necessarily better at comedy than I was radio, but it's more immediate feedback, so you know what you're doing. Uh huh. And um, and yeah, so that blew up pretty fast. Um, 
started doing paid gigs real quick. Um, you know, I'm not like a huge successful, you know, super successful guy, but uh, in the game still and uh, and loving it. I mean, I couldn't. I can't. I don't have the balls to get up with someone and have like the bombing part is the one that'd be the part that I would have the problem with is just eating shit in front of all these people and not knowing how to dig my ass right on out of it. Yeah. And the problem with that is nobody really, I mean, you know, it's going to have everybody bombs, even the best comics, you know, it, Yeah. It, no, no one has ever had a career, you know, where they went up more than once a year and didn't bomb. And um, they don't tell you uh, a lot about how to handle it, especially how to dig out of it. You can't sometimes there's yeah. no way. Um, you know, uh, especially early on when you're taking gigs, you know, the more time you do, pers- uh, basically, usually the, the general rule is the more time you're doing on the show, the more money you're getting. So as you're coming up, you know, somebody will say, while you're doing a 10 minute set, they'll say, Hey, do you have 25, 30? So you can, you know, make more money. And you're always going to say, yeah. you know, yes, with reason, you know, you're not going to say you can do an hour when you have 10 minutes, but, um, you know, the, the first time you bomb when you're still trying to stretch your little bit of time and you've got, you've got no other materials. So there's nothing you can do. And, you know, you still got to do another 15, 20 minutes without, you know, any material and you're probably going to get booed even more. And yeah, it's happened. Here's my question. Have you ever gone on stage with like 10 minutes? Dude's like, Hey, can you do 30? And you're like, yeah, no problem. And your 10 minutes that you had salad was eating shit. And you're sitting up there like, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ride in this together for another 20 oh, yeah. minutes together. Yeah, the worst, the worst, uh, at least at this point, the worst time I've I bombed is I was in Dallas at a club called Hyenas on uh, second show uh, Friday. And uh, sorry, oh, like you're I good. said I worked tonight, so. You're um, good, man. So anyway, um the feature act at that club had to do uh, 25 to 30 minutes. Now at this time I had 25 to 30 minutes, but that was if it was going well. Mm-hmm. Um, you see when you're, when you're getting laughs, it adds about five to 10 minutes, five to seven minutes to the set because of the laughs, there's a laugh break. Yeah, you can just kind of let those draw out a little bit. But if, yeah, to. exactly. But if okay. you think you have 25 to 30 minutes, but then your material gets no laughs, that's about 18 minutes. Oh. And so I I remember we had all good shows, the first three shows of the week, you know, uh, Thursday and then, well, yeah, two shows. So Thursday and then first show Friday went great. Uh, the host was funny. You know, I was the middle guy in the show. Oh. Uh-huh. And, uh, host came out on that second show friday and he didn't get any laughs none right none mm-hmm. they didn't laugh for him at all. and like i said he had been doing good he had two good shows yeah so i thought to myself i was like okay so this is this crowd's you know a little tight whatever see you know I mean, he maybe he had an offset oh well but we'll get him you know and uh went up there and did about the first three minutes and no laughs you know five minutes and then and, and it yeah, about about minute twelve when I realized I had to go for another, you know, at least fifteen, and I had about three to five minutes of jokes left. I did. I actually told the audience. I said, "Listen, guys, I have to be up here uh, for another fifteen minutes, and I've got you know about six seven minutes of jokes left. So <laughs> let's uh, let's strap in and let's see what happens here." Yeah. Oh. Uh, and so I, it wasn't all that bad, so, you know, because uh, at that point you kind of win them over a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I got some people laughing, but it was still a, a big bomb. And, uh, and, and yeah, so that was the worst. Yeah, sometimes you really can't, can't help it. Just, um, sometimes it really is the audience. Yeah, I guess. What is it? I, was part, I guess there's a club in Miami. I was, listening, I was watching some – on a podcast to stand up he goes there's a there's a club in miami every time we go to he goes every time i go to i know the second or fourth third show i'm just going to eat shit on every time i'm there yeah. for the weekend the second or third show i'm there and once i get past that show it's a great weekend i make money everyone has laughs everyone has a good time it's just that room for some reason on the second or third show i just eat shit every time so yeah it. well uh when they asked steve martin why he quit doing um 
stand-up comedy, his reply was second show Friday. Uh, so, you know, sometimes yeah. there's just a lot, a lot of comics claim that uh, the last show of the, of the weekend is sometimes the weakest, you know, it all just depends. Uh, and yeah, some, some clubs are different. So. That's, I mean, that's seen. So Tim, I want to ask you a ton of questions about your standup. I'm not going to lie to you because I'm intrigued by standup. I've been a standup fan all my life and you're the only person I know that is a standup. So bear down with okay. me <laughs> and they will. And then you get to promote whatever you want. I promise you. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm not. Okay. You know, dude, sorry, man. Uh, no, go ahead. Dude. So like your writing process and everything like that, like, what do you do? Like, what do you go through? I like, I want to pick your head brain with all this, man. So the writing process, when I, when I started, I was coming over from radio. So I used to write a lot of like, uh, basically radio type rants, you know, uh-huh. um, it wasn't hard. That's one reason why I started so fast in comedy is because I could already write jokes and stuff like that. I was having to write them for, you know, my radio stuff. Gotcha. Um, so uh, initially I would write out, you know, a whole paragraph, you know, edit it out, then try to like kind of memorize it mm -hmm. um and then you know once you once you have some material you, you that that you know works you kind of start uh just picking and pulling yeah you kind of start uh you know just editing it out and editing out the stuff that doesn't work adding stuff that does work um but now i've gotten to the point where uh what i'll do is i'll come up with like a premise or an idea or something i want to talk about and then, uh, so I'll just put the, the theme, you know, or the, the overall thing, like if it's, you know, talking about gumballs or something like that, you know, and then, uh, -huh. uh I'll just put a dash and then put a, put like what's called a tag. So when you watch a, when you watch a comedian's bit, uh, you know, they have the, the, the joke title basically, which is yeah. like the joke. Theme. And then, you know, you, you'll have those little minor punchlines before you get to the, like the big punchline at the end uh -huh. those are what's called tags all right okay and so I'll, I'll write the 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 basic idea and then i'll just put a dash and then put like a keyword for the first tag second tag or tag and then a keyword for the punchline and then i'll try it out on stage usually at a show and it, and you know you try a joke three or four times and if if it gets nothing then either that's not a good premise or, you know, it's just totally not ready. If it gets a little bit, you know, then you can keep working on it. Um, if it gets a lot, then you need to keep working on it, you know? Um, yeah. So you just got to kind of gauge um, the new material and, and then just write it. I, I write, I write one liners usually, and then I, I work them out, you know, I will have an idea or a, a, a joke that started out as a, you know, two, two line joke. And then after doing shows and stuff, by the time you're done with it, it's, you know, three or four minutes, something like that. Oh, that's kind of, you know, that's really interesting how you just, you know, the thought process just, you start here. It's almost like you work in reverse and then yeah. you kind of, you have your line and you go, okay, now I got to get to that line. And then okay, I'm going to kind of break it down for layman serves how my brain works what you just said was very intriguing to me because you were like like if you get a lot of laughs on a joke the first time out okay you need to keep working on that joke to make it to really fine tune it and if it don't get yeah as i get any laughs a couple of times you're like all right i need to just kind of put that one off and start something new pretty much what you're saying yeah one of the, one of my early mentors in comedy told me basically that uh no joke is ever finished um, a lot of times I'll be doing a joke that I've done for, you know, two, three, four, five years. And you're in the moment on stage in the crowd, you know, uh, somebody might say something over here and then you say something else on that joke that adds to it, mm -hmm. um, or something like that. You know, a lot of, a lot of the best stuff in my act right now, uh, was ad libbed originally. Um, you know, and then you, if it works, you go and add it. Oh, nice. That's really neat. All right, so I have to ask you, man, what was it like when meeting Kevin Hart and going on Heart of the City, man? Uh, that was really cool. There's an interesting backstory to that. I was, uh, my day job was still in radio at the time, and uh, I was working as a board op for iHeart Radio in Houston. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
they uh, approached me at one point and they told me, you know, I needed to choose whether I wanted to keep working for them or, or doing stand up. And I basically told them, you know, I was going to do stand up. And so they, uh, being the heartless corporation that they are, they, they kind of finagled it to where uh, they fired me about two weeks later. It was, it was uh, an un, unfair firing. I ended up getting some cash for it. But uh, the funny part about that was uh, a, about a week or so after they fired me, I got the news that we would be filming for the Kevin Hart thing in the iHeart building. Oh, that's excellent. That's awesome. So I got to go back to the place that had just fired me for comedy. They fired me because I wanted to do comedy. I got to go back and film in their building with Kevin Hart three weeks after they fired me. That has to be like walking in the locker room and dropping your towel and just whipping out the biggest dick that just in the it, locker it room was, and just all glory. You know, it was really fun. It was really fun. You know, all the. All my uh, coworkers, they were, you know, happy for me, happy to see me, you know, in the management. They were not nonplussed, I would say. Um, I didn't even have to say anything. It was great. I that's, just stared at them and just, you know. Just, was, yeah, that's, you don't have to do nothing. You just dropped a towel in the locker room and you're, and every, you're like, I know, everyone's staring. Yeah. I don't need to point at it. Everyone knows it's big. It's great. It's like that yeah, confidence was, swagger. It was, it was really fun. You know, it was really fun. But uh, Kevin Hart uh, himself, though. Uh, really nice guy, uh, hard worker. Um, he knew like he was basically running the whole show, even though, you know, a, a show like that, you have producers, directors and all that yeah. stuff. But, uh, he had something like three or four cell phones on him, you know, and he was a, a, a real micromanaging guy, but you know, Hey, if, if he's going to micromanage it and then it works, then why, it, why it, not work with it? He's successful for a reason. So oh, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not, I'd never hard fix it yeah i went back like when you said yeah i'm gonna come on here i went back and started watching youtube clips of you on there you do very well and for a oh you got the joke man for looking like you're a grandmaster in the ku klux klan you do very well in front of the black crowd and it's fantastic for you to you know do when you walked in you're like well when you asked why your first joke in front of everyone and everyone's rolling about white people dressing up and everyone just stares at you and it just slowly builds and you're not saying anything and then that's a roaring crowd. And you look at Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart just shaking his head. Like, I can't believe this fucker is just letting this crowd laugh at him like this. Like he's just, yeah. bored. dude, like, what was that like? Because you sat there, what, 15, 20 seconds before you said something again. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, yeah, that crowd was ready to laugh. I think I went on third or, or so out, out of that uh, show. They actually filmed it in a, a different uh, order than they aired it on the, on the show. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, I had been doing that little BS opening line uh, at, at clubs and stuff. So I knew I knew it worked, you know. Uh -huh. um, but uh, but yeah, that was a really good experience. Um, and uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I just I was impressed with you just be able to sit there for the balls and just sit there, let it silent and just let that bill for 10, 15 seconds before you opened your mouth again. But yeah. when they cut to Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart just shook, had his head shaking. I don't know if you ever seen it. I don't know if you went back and ever looked at it again. No, yeah, I've, yeah. But yeah, he's shaking. But he's shaking his head. Just, I'm like, I can't believe he opened with this one. Like he, yeah. he like he was floored that you had the balls to do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It was, but, it was fun. Yeah. So, how long did you do it in Houston before you were like, all right, I'm pulling, I'm pulling rope, I'm pulling, pulling chalk. I'm heading to fucking LA. I got, I'm gonna go make it in LA. Uh, well, I started in 2010 and I got the Kevin Hart, Heart of the City thing in uh, late 16. And mm -hmm. uh, really, that's pretty much when I decided to move out uh, of Houston. You know, once you get uh, once you get a, a TV credit, you kind of go up a level, you know. Yeah. Um, so I uh, I left Houston in uh, the summer of 2017. So July, July, 2017, July, 2017, and just pull chalks went there. So it just started working the club scene. Uh, yeah, well, not really the club scene out here. Um, when I, when I came out here, I, I was much more focused on uh, the whole acting thing. Okay. Um, and then, uh, I got the crown Royal commercial. The first thing when I got out here was my first audition. Oh, you, that was your first audition. You that was my first it? audition, and um, and I got that pretty big commercial. Um, 
you know, cool. and uh, from that got the agent and everything. And, you know, it's been going good. COVID uh, hurt everybody out here, especially, you know, the people, those of us that aren't, you know, the, the biggest names or anything. Yeah, um, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, that's got to yeah. suck for you, man. Like, eh. so you got the Crown Royal thing and then you got the 100 people on Netflix uh the hunter humans thing yeah we actually humans. filmed that uh we filmed that in 2018 i believe they didn't release it until right before the pandemic yeah um so that was actually something you know a lot of people 2020 they didn't have anything that came out i at least had that little thing that came out i mean it wasn't anything you know it's groundbreaking not the... or whatever but you know it was a nice little project and uh Hoping, hoping for more now that they're so reopening. You know? Everything's reopening, starting to go on more auditions and stuff like that. And everything. Uh, yeah, they're still doing most. Most of the auditions are still self tape, um, yeah. which is fine. Uh, yeah, I prefer the in person auditions. I seem to do better with that because, for one, you they, they're able to give you more direction. Okay. Um, you know, the folks that do the uh, the auditions and stuff, those are usually just you know maybe interns or like low level casting people. Um, but uh, a lot of times when you get the in-person auditions, you get some, some folks that know what they're looking for more in the ads and, and the shows and stuff like that. So, but you know, it, it's, it's a competitive business and it is what it is. So. So, you know. so I guess you're switching gears from the stand up to more acting and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm still doing the stand up. I'm doing uh Corpus Christi, uh, the last weekend of August and I'm doing uh flappers comedy club in Burbank next Saturday. So, you know, still doing comedy. Um, but, uh, the main focus, yeah, I'm trying to do the, the acting thing, um, is the, is the main focus, but you know, we, we're, we're doing them all. Yeah. That's awesome. So, can I ask you, you kind of told, you kind of gave me a hint on something earlier. Can I ask you about it or no? Yeah, go ahead. Did you get, did you, the, you told me you're auditioning for a role. I, I, yeah, I, I auditioned for probably the biggest role I've auditioned for. And, you know, with most, with most auditions, the way it works, and this is, yeah. this is something that caused me a lot of problems was getting that crown Royal thing on my first audition because in my head, I'm thinking, Oh, well, I need easy, all I'm thinking, you know, I'm just going to go out. Uh, so I spend, I spend most of that money. Right. You know, <laughs> and then it wasn't, it wasn't a crazy amount of money. It wasn't a crazy, it was a non-union. So it wasn't like a nuts. Now here's the thing. They played it in the Super Bowl. If that would have been a union ad, then I would have got a ton of money. But yeah, I know I, like someone told me to like, and someone texted me and was like, Hey, do you know, Tim's at a Super Bowl ad? I went, Tim who? And they're like, Matt, yeah. I went, and let me tell you another story about that, because this is the funny part, right? Yeah. So um, I had I had a terrible breakup, right, oh, shit. with this chick. Okay, uh -oh. she was with me when when we did the Comedy Central thing and everything. Terrible yeah. breakup. And she's a, and she's a football fan. The whole reason we had a we the whole reason we had a breakup, she basically didn't have faith in me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was she like, yeah, I. I was like, I'm going to move out to LA. I'm going to get me a, a, a big commercial spot and, you know, and then I'll, I'll have my career and blah, blah, blah. You know, cause I'm still broke. I was a comic yeah. and everything. Yeah. And the funny part was she had no faith two months into getting into LA and I got a national spot. So she had to watch that every time she watched a football oh, game. And it God. just made me smile so much. Yeah. Tim, you have the best redemption stories. It really is. It's you weird how yeah you have the great like so let me get so start comedy i mm -hmm. you working for i heard at radio they yeah. fire you because you're like i want to do comedy they fire you yeah three weeks later you walk in there with kevin hart yeah with kevin hart who's the and a comedy central crew yeah and a comedy central and kevin hart is the biggest comic yeah. out right there yeah now, yeah especially in 2016 i mean oh. that was that was he was the hottest, you know. That's going. when he sold out Eagles, where the Eagles play. Yeah. That's when he did that tour, when he sold out And then that the next stadium. one was, had a bad breakup before I moved out to L.A. And then did exactly what I said I was going to do in L.A. Got a national uh, commercial that played during football games. And my ex is a football fan. So it was really <laughs> great. It was really great. Bravo, sir. Thank you. Bra oh, but uh, so, so yeah, that's. Oh. <laughs> thanks. 
but what we were talking about so um the audition process yeah so the but getting that spot you know i really thought oh well you know no problem um and how it basically works is you go into you go to the do the audition you know um uh, yeah. usually you have callbacks so they might see 100 people they might call back 10 you know and then from that 10 they'll they'll uh ask you to go on what's called avails and what avails means is so for example this project i'm doing right or i'm up for right now um they film in october um october 5th for two weeks or something like that uh -huh. um so basically they'll say we film from here to here and if you tell them you're available for that and that you're up for the role your agent and you you can't even submit for like anything that would uh, conflict with that you so nothing they can, yeah so nothing can have film you can audition exactly. for anything that's going to be you're going to do with those that yeah yeah, yeah. Gotcha. you're basically on a hold now you haven't gotten the spot and mm -hmm. you're not getting paid for it um so it's kind of like being in limbo um but it does mean you're still up for it which is good and and to answer your question as far as hearing back uh, i talked to my agent yesterday we still haven't heard back which means that they still haven't um, gotcha. selected anybody um so it's we've been on hold for a little over a week now so you know it happens um yeah. but uh until they until they announce you know dude i hope i hope, I hope you so get it too. dude i really <laughs> would be really solid yeah because then you're you know you're completing like a i'll say it offline but like like, like you're completing a franchise you know what i mean yeah. you're, you're yeah. completing the chess people of a franchise of two powerhouses you know oh yeah yeah it would be and, it would be uh it would be really uh fun and interesting and um i believe it films overseas so we would be filming overseas and stuff like that so oh man so you get to go back overseas and get to do the same dirty shit that you used to do when we were in our early 20s well yeah but yeah. uh you know you know but i i doubt i actually doubt it because i uh you know with covid and everything probably won't be able to go anywhere no yeah, you can't go too much you know you gotta get no. your vac get your vaccines everyone i guess oh, I I'm, I'm i'm vaxxed you know they, that's one thing out here that especially working in the film industry you pretty much had to get it yeah um, fine you know we got vaccinated all kind of stuff on the boat so i'm not really worried about like it you know if they were really injecting people with some kind of dangerous <laughs> thing i i don't think they would see, in, do it to 100 million people see my so. fear and i'll i'll tell everyone my fear is so and I'll tell everyone this and everyone can call me a liar. My wife used to call me a liar. So I never had a flu shot until I went in the service. Mm -hmm. Every year I was in the service, they'd give us a flu shot. You know, they'd line us up. We'd all get the flu shot. And it was like clockwork. 48 to 72 hours in between that time frame, I would get the flu for five days. Yeah. And be sick for, and I was sick, like sick. Full blown, yeah. Full blown flu. Like I would go to chief and chief be like, should have got your flu shot. I went, I'm on the list and it's checked off, man. I got the flu shot. Yeah. And I, and I would get like the flu times two. So if it was a bad flu season that year. I would have the worst case flu. Yeah. Like it was like one year I got my flu shot and ended up with like 104.4 degree temperature was in the hospital for two days. Or Yeah. Yeah. I think days. some people just don't, uh, don't work well with those flu shots. Yeah. So I don't I've work never... well. <laughs> so I went, I, I'm going to back off and I'm like, I'm going to wait for the second generation COVID shot before I go yeah. get my vaccine. I'll take my vitamin D, take my vitamin C, zinc, and I'll wear a mask where I need to. And I'll be hopefully okay. Yeah. I mean, you don't seem like you're an, in the at risk category, you know, um, if I, no. if I wasn't working in an industry where I had to take it, I, I probably still wouldn't have gotten, I'd, I'd get it eventually, you yeah. know, but my my whole thing was uh, during the COVID when when they said it was you know uh, the main comorbidity was being out of out of out of shape. I mean, when the thing started, I was at uh, I was at two hundred and twenty two pounds, um, and now I'm at like one eighty one. Uh, oh shit, man! Good for you. Yeah, I just started working out. Um, I, I gained a lot of weight initially when it when we closed down because I. I I was going to lose weight. I was going to go to the gym and I was going to the gym. I was down from 238 to 222 in mm -hmm. 2020. 
yeah. just from January to April. And then we shut down in April and I immediately gained back like 10 pounds because the gyms were shut down. So I couldn't go to the gym. And finally, I just told myself, you're going to gain a hundred pounds over this thing if you don't, you know, start working out. So I just started doing, you know, uh, those calisthenics that we used to do. I did a bunch of those, those at, at mm-hmm. work and at home and all that stuff, you know, um, and, yeah, uh, you know, Dude, I was already, I was kind of fortunate because at the end of 2019, like towards the end of 2019, I always told myself if I ever got under 300 pounds, I was going to quit smoking. I stepped on the scale. I blew out my knee or I kind of twisted my knee from an old injury, kind of re-aggravated it. Mm-hmm. Uh, an old service injury kind of re-aggravated it. And I had to go to the doctor, stepped on the scale, and I was 310 pounds. I went, huh, oh, wow. holy fuck this shit. So I quit smoking. I'm like. I need to get over smoking and then I'm going to know I'm going to put on some weight and then I'll start. And then I'm going to set a goal for myself. Yeah. So I was already gearing up for all that. And I just clipped, I just clipped a hundred pound mark. I just lost, I just lost a hundred pounds. Oh, nice. So yeah. I'm down. I dude, I'm down to like, the, I think I need, if I lose five more pounds, I'll be at the weight when I get out of the service. Oh, nice. So yeah. I'm at, I'll be at two, I'll be at five more pounds. I'll be at 245, man. That's what I got. And I, I was, I haven't been that since I was 26 when I got out of the service. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm actually under my service weight for most of the service. I was like around 200. So I'm like pretty good. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've been gaining a little bit of weight. I've been stress eating over this role. Still waiting on that. <laughs> but I know this has to be the worst part about this. Oh Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would rather like, well, and that's what I was going to say earlier. You know, most auditions, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Most auditions, you don't hear back anything. You don't get a call back. I mean, maybe if I was like some transcendent acting talent, you know, I would be getting, you know, but, but for the most part, it's a numbers game, you know, Um, so most auditions, you send it out there, either you don't fit the look that they're looking for or, you know, something like that. And they just don't even, you know, contact you back. So when I got the notice that I was on avails for it, you know, that right there, I was, I was kind of shocked. Um, and then we've been waiting a week. So, <laughs> but that's how it, that's how it goes. Like I said, they don't film till October. Um, and because it's overseas, you know, they have a lot of, uh, they got to make sure everybody's got their passports and stuff like that. So, Luckily we do over here. So maybe hopefully the other guys that are up for it, their, their passports get lost in the mail or something. Darn the bad luck. That'd be, that so, would be, that would be just off here. I just got a quick question. No one's jaded you. That is a fan of this person or his background. Are it, are it, are they like, no one's jaded you. That's a fan of this, that role that you're up for. No, no. Well, I was just uh, thinking because if they jaded you within the last three weeks, it's a shoe in for you. You should get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, <laughs> but I mean, no, uh, no, it's been, it's been fairly, fairly decent process, you know, just got our fingers crossed and hopefully it works out. Yeah. I'm, you know, just ran, I figured it was some random stranger, you know, might've done something to fuck, like fuck you over slightly. And you're just like, you <laughs> nah, know what? Nah. Oh, you got that. Oh, you're that guy's fan. I'm up for that part in three weeks. I know I'm going to fucking get it you know just saying that'd be no, fucking they, awesome. they did extend the deadline and and what that means uh they extended the deadline on auditions uh, uh and, and what that means is uh they may have a big name that they're interested in trying to put in there you know and that that would be that's usually what ends up happening when you're up for a decent role and you yeah. don't get it is you see it about you know three months later you'll see they'll release it and it'll be somebody that you know has a resume you know, the real, it, it, like most, like most of these type of industries, the hardest part of breaking into it is breaking into it. You know, yeah, it's one of the things where it's those jobs that, oh, you got to have X amount of experience, but we don't give you that, you know, um, hey, give me one second, Tim. Let me pause yeah, you for no a problem. second. All right. Sorry. Anyways. Okay. So what were we talking about? We were talking I, about, oh yeah. Nagging injury. In, in, okay. And yeah, getting... I, whatever we're talking about before the record, before we start recording, we're sorry, we're moving on. We forgot the record button. We're back in our conversation. Yeah, nagging injuries. So yeah, nagging industry in, in, industries in, injuries. Um, so I, I wasn't gonna get my my VA disability stuff. wasn't gonna do it. Didn't need it uh, while I was working in radio. I was sitting down the whole time. Yeah. Uh, my my problem is I'm flat footed and I my knee was really screwy. Um, but I never really. You know, like I said, I 
I could work 40 hours at the radio station, no problem, because I'm sitting in front of a soundboard, you know? Yeah. Uh, but once I moved out here and my day job when I came out here, I got a job at Whole Foods stocking groceries um, during the holiday season. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. In Glendale, California. Um, so it was it was rough and uh, I couldn't walk, you know, some days after work and yeah. for for my entirety of my days off. So I finally I finally went in and had to do that because it like, yeah, my knee was locking up which caused my back to lock up and it was yeah it's the injuries you get you don't even realize it you know yeah hold on tim one more second sorry buddy let all me right, pause no you problem. for the guy sorry about that car no worries yeah and yeah so i wasn't gonna get mine either and then i started losing weight and going to the gym and then like last year i threw my back out really bad and i yeah. finally and i was like i need to go see a chiropractor so i was going to a chiropractor a chiropractor's like you walk funny I went, what do you mean? She goes like your hips. She goes, your back's out. I'm like, yeah, no shit. My back's out. No, she was like, no. And like when I, she started getting me, she goes, your back's all fucked. You, you're walking. She was like, you walk funny to begin with. Yeah. She goes, how are your knees? I'm like, not worth a shit. And she was like, so she started, she's like, yeah. And like this process gets to the day. Like now I would I walk every day, three miles every day, except mm -hmm. for on Sundays. I like, I try to walk three miles every day. And that's about all I can get. And before I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I got to sit down. I have to fucking sit oh, yeah. here and do something. It's bad. Yeah. So we'll find out. We'll see what the VA says. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Yeah. They pretty much, uh, if, if you got documentation, they'll. Uh... Yeah. She was just like, she was like, yeah. oh, I see you blew out your knee here. I see you have a car accident here. You know, I see you fucked it up here. And I'm like, yep. Got all of that. So we'll see what they say, you know? Well, yeah. But yeah, those injuries, it's just weird how they just creep up on you when you hit 40. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, like I said, mine was, I knew I had strained something in my lower back this last time. Uh, I've been going really hard at the gym, man. I'm not, I'm not bragging. It's, it's been crazy. Like I did all the, I did all the calisthenics and stuff. Um, and I was getting to where, you know, I'm doing, just hella push-ups and jumping jacks and sit-ups did a whole one day all just nothing but leg exercises you know really blowing it out and then when the gym's open I said you know what I'm I'm really going to use my gym membership for the first time since my 20s and I'll be honest with you I'm doing I'm doing more exercises you know oh, really? but that's another thing you know now I'm pushing it too hard <laughs> I uh I've, I've got this system now to where like I, I max out on everything that I do. I'll, I'll, I'll start, you know, at a certain weight and, and then, I'll do, you know, probably 10, 12, you know, and then go to eight, five. And then by the time I get, you know, I'm, I'm barely doing one or two. And I did that with the lower back machine and that just wasn't a good idea. Um, I, I knew it was tight and it was tight for like two days and I tried to stretch it out. And then, uh, one night, you know, before going to work, I, uh, I was putting on my belt and I, it, it just felt a little pop, you know, in it. And I was like, okay. And then like 30 minutes later, it was really hurting, you know? So, so that's how it goes. But, uh, I'm actually planning on starting back up hard tomorrow working out. So I'm hoping that'll. Well, take it, e out. take it easy. It's, we're not spring chickens anymore, big guy. Let's take it a little off. Yeah, well, you got to take the gas off the pedal every once in a while. And that and that's what's that's what's bothering me because I spent my entire 30s being a fat shit. <laughs> Dude. I'm so mad at myself because I'm like, man, if you would have just worked out just a little, you don't even have to do much different to be fat and to be like decently in shape. I'm not, I'm not over here, you know, Johnny six pack, but it's like you really don't have to do much to be like in average shape remind me to tell you a six pack story No, literally i remember like i went hard like i went hard at everything i did in my 20s that's why i'm like i was injured all the time oh you yeah. blew out your knee oh you you tore part of your acl you, oh no nah, that's fine <coughs> it'll be okay it'll heal they're like no you need surgery no i don't it's fine and now and then it started hurting where i had to shut down and i just treated my body like garbage just with boobs all the time in my 30s and yeah. now that i'm ending my thirties, heading to my forties. I'm just, and I got back into shape and I've lost all this weight. I'm like, why you fucking fat gluttonous fuck. If you just, instead of 
six pieces of pizza. You could have had three, and you wouldn't have had to work nearly as fucking hard to get back into the shape that you're in now. You oh yeah, dumb. And you just, I'll just kick myself in my ass every day. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's um. <laughs> Fuck. So how old are how old are you? You're about to be forty. Yeah, I'll be forty later this year. I'll be forty in November. Yeah, yeah, and I turned forty in June, and that was June, another June. reason. That was another reason why, like, I looked, I looked at me being forty, and I was like, "You really need to get in shape." You know, if 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 you turn around and you're like 44, 45, it's really hard to get back in shape. So, so you know, I quit. The older you get, the harder it's going to get. So I said, you know, I I just need to, and I used the the COVID as an, as as a motivation to do it. You know, yeah. oh, that was a huge motivation. It was a great. It, I was like, you can either come out of this thing fat as hell or you can come out of it in decent shape. So, and, and honestly, it worked out perfect for me because my body they're looking for. So this role I'm up for is a a real person. So they need somebody who looks like them, you know? And if I would have been 40 pounds heavier, I wouldn't be in the running for it. So, you know, it's really, it's really fortuitous that uh, I got in there and worked out a little bit. All you need is a spray tan. (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> dude i'm telling you when you told i will me- admit i do need to work on the voice uh that the guy i'm talking about his voice is lower than mine um and i tried to do it and it, it does the problem is you can't you yourself really unless you're one of those like high level uh you know impersonator guys uh-huh. that really know this stuff i can't really tell myself how my voice sounds as i'm you know so it's hard for me to really mimic certain certain uh, folks. And this one was tough. Um, so I don't think I had it 100 percent, which, you know, is always in the back of my mind during this waiting period. Uh, 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 there's another guy out there that has the voice 100 percent, you know. Yeah, it looks but, a little bit. Maybe uh, he looks a little bit more like him than me or. Uh. Yeah, they let us ad lib some lines and I, I had some good ad lib lines. So I think they probably like that um you were a huge you're a huge fan of this guy's growing up as well weren't you well yeah i mean yeah, all of us the, were like all of, of it, which is know? the and craziest I, part yeah yeah um so uh yeah if it, if it works out you know it would be really it would be really great you know and it would be a big role for for a first like speaking network role so hopefully especially with my unfortunate look uh Hopefully I can uh, turn it into, you know, just play another, you know, bit, bit characters. One of the problems I've run into out here. So with this look, they don't want you doing background a lot um, because it's, it stands out, you know? (laughs) Yeah, it stands out. So, um, so I, I tried to get, there's actual background agents that'll get you, you know, background roles all over the place. A friend of mine's been in probably 40 movies in background. Yeah. Um, and it's not bad money. You know, it's yeah. sometimes it's four or five hundred dollars a day. Oh, wow. Uh, to, just, to just stand around and, you know, hey, you walk over that way when such and such happens. You know, it's really easy money. But I, I couldn't find a background agent because they said with my look, it's more of a character actor look and you're not going to get all that much background work, which has turned out to be true. I don't get a lot yeah. of background work. So. How come you just made the switch from like, why'd you stop stand up? Like, yeah, I'm like, you haven't really stopped stand up, but why'd you kind of just not switch gear or ge- work on that nearly as much since you're out there? Uh, well, that, that was my whole, my, my this whole, was whole your plan so, anyways. Yeah. When, when I was in the Navy, uh, I knew I wanted to do either, you know, radio comedy, something like that. And, uh, the, the easiest one to get into that, that, is guaranteed money is radio because you can just get a job, you know? And so I, I had my own radio show, um, and, and was doing that. And then I figured, well, you know, like I said, once I got laid off from radio and I'd always wanted to do stand up, And then once I was really good at stand up, really early on, you know, and, um, I said, well, I've always though, the one thing I really thought that I'd never have a chance to do would be acting and then once I realized I had such a unique, unique look, yeah. I said, okay, uh, I'm going to do stand up until I get a credit, which was the Kevin Hart thing, got that credit. Uh-huh. And, then I, and then I'm going to go see if I can get into acting. Um, at least they'll know, you know, hey, yeah, he can do comedy, clearly. So, you know, uh, and it worked, you know. Uh, 
and commercials pay pretty well. Um, I, like I said, if, if that first commercial, if that Super Bowl ad would have been, uh, would have been union, then yeah, uh, you been. it would have been, been really nice. Oh, oh, buddy. This real, yeah. yeah, I have a, so I have a friend and his college roommate is out there. And he's yeah. been on like Big Bang Theory. He's done uh-huh. com- and he's done commercials with like the Miller Lite commercials and stuff like that. And I'll never forget, like he came out of town, or I guess they did on a boy. They went on like the fraternity boys trip, and he was like, "Hey guys, don't worry about it. Miller Lite's paying for everything." And he goes, "As long as it's Miller Lite, he goes, Miller Lite's paying for everything." Oh, nice. And I'm like, "How the fuck?" He goes, "Miller." Part of his commercial deal was for one month. He got to use as long as they were buying Miller Lite products. He got to use Miller Lite's credit card. Wow, that's he nice. Goes, so he goes, you know how cool it is to walk into a bar and was like, "Who wants the Miller Lite?" Everyone's nice. like, "Let's do this." And he goes, "It's fun." He goes, <clears throat> and "That was part of the deal for the commercial." And I'm yeah. like, "Fuck!" I'm Unfortunately, like, mine was non-union. We didn't even yeah. get. We didn't even get a. Uh, you didn't get a crowd roll bag. We didn't get nothing. You didn't get a crown royal. You're the we centerpiece didn't. of this commercial. You didn't get a. Did you get to keep the hat? Uh, no. You know what though? I did. They almost. They almost made it into a series. Uh, they called me, uh, and it was funny because it was actually while I was in orientation for Whole Foods. <laughs> Dude, how you're like? You almost quit your job in orientation. But this is. But this is. But this was how delusional it made me, because. I just figured like, God, this acting thing is so easy. You know, these, these guys are all over me, you know? Yeah. It was all just because, I mean, the role was perfect. Uh, When, when I, so the way I got that was a friend of mine. I was, I came out here, I was broke. I, I, I used my last $200 to get out here. Um, Didn't have a job or anything. And a friend of mine was like, yeah, you can make, you can get acting auditions on LA casting. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's a website, it's called LA Casting, you know, it's kind of, you know, you just, you submit for roles. Yeah. That's your perimeters. So right now I've got mine set, uh, you know, Caucasian male, 35 to 45. Uh, the roles I'm, you know, the roles I, I submit for are things like, you know, uh, janitor or like uh, uh, manager or something like that, yeah. you know, just normal yeah. stuff. Uh, and this one was high school football coach. And I'm from South Texas. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, I look like, and at the time I was, at the time I was about two, two forty. So you look so like a real Andy, Andy, Andy Reid. Reid. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they, and that's what they said. And I, I really benefited. <clears throat> so I went in for the auditions and if you recall the spot, you know, it was me and another guy, we were yelling at these guys that were working out. And so I, I went in there and, uh, they would just basically let us ad lib. They would say, okay, you're trying to motivate them to work out. And it would be a, a dude and a chick. Cause it was a co-ed commercial. Yeah. And, um, and I, I got lucky, you know, when I went for the audition, uh, I got to sit outside and you could hear the other guys in there, you know? So I knew, how much the other people were bringing it. So I knew that I had to really bring it, you know, if I, if I would have not heard how loud some of those guys were getting, yeah, you know, now I did know number one, that it was a comedic ad and that they, they would probably like somebody who had a comedic look for the coach. Yeah. And, and I mean, the other guys looked like, you know, the hard nose straight lace, you know, uh, they look like Mike, the Mike Singletary. They look like the Mike Ditka types, oh. where you know he he looks tougher with that yeah. look. You know, I look funnier with that look. So, which is, you know, it works out. Uh, you know, it works out with casting directors, not so much with the broads. So, uh, yeah. If I, <laughs> that's one of the problems is if I get this role, I'm gonna have to keep this look. Oh. And, but it, it, it would be nice to get paid to look like this at some point, you know. You so. only had that look for twenty years, man. I don't, I don't know you any other way. Well, no, like I said, when I listen, when I was in, when I was in college, and uh, from from like twenty five to thirty three, I I was, you know, I had a shaved yeah. bald head and I had a nice full black beard, you know. 
looking good in shape, etc. Then I started doing comedy. And uh, I, I'll tell you a story. One time I'm standing at the, I was at the Houston Improv. I was about to go on. I had this look, hadn't shaved in a couple of days like this, you know. So uh -huh. I'm looking, I'm looking real homelessy, you know. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I'll, most of most of my comedy, probably the first like five minutes of every one of my sets is self-deprecation. And I, I learned to do that early on because if you're going to talk about everybody else, if they see that you'll talk about yourself up front, then they're like, okay, well, this guy's just, you know, just an asshole to everybody. He includes himself. He knows he ain't shit, you know? Yeah. And, and they let you get away with it. So I'm standing there. I'm, I'm in a dirty hoodie, you know, I'm, I'm looking like this. And uh, a friend of mine comes up and he said, damn, Tim, you look like shit. And I was like, yeah. I said, uh, I do self-deprecation. So the worse I look, the better I do up there. He's all, oh, man. You're going to kill it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, you know, I had a good set. Uh, but uh, it, it was funny. One of the times I did the comedy store out here, uh, this guy that went on before me, and, you know, he looked, he looked kind of shlubby. Wait, hold on. You've done the comedy store? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. We used to do a show before the pandemic called Crack 'em Up uh, Thursdays. Oh, um, so I've been a huge fan of the comedy store since Richard Pryor's. What is it? Uh -huh. Live on the Sunset. He he didn't yeah. do it. I don't know. Did he do it? He didn't film it at uh, the main room there. But who? There's some, but someone else filmed around that time as well. Yeah, there's a lot of filming. There, yeah. But there's oh, there. But I remember because I seen Live on the Sunset trip by Richard Pryor when I was way entirely too fucking young. Yeah. <laughs> you know my fucking parents didn't have any control over that. Yeah. And then, but the fucking comedy club, the comedy store has always been that hub it seemed like and like the aura for that place oh yeah so, you know, so what's that like to go into there and see that be honest with you that's why oh, i mean it's yeah it's it's really it's it's cool you know is it's, it intimidating uh, at time when you walk oh in? yeah the first well the first time you go so you know you come out to la or whatever you think you're hot shit you know and uh you go go to the the first day i went to the comedy the first night i went to the comedy store uh who was the first uh now it's it doesn't sound as good anymore but chris delia was one of the first persons oh. and i, I never I, i'll say this much i'll say this much to my credit i was never a huge fan of his comedy i thought it was all kind of yeah. it but i know. like i like so i like him like i wasn't a fan of his comedy i was more of a fan of his uh, his like comedic podcast. acting his acting, I, I was his acting. I liked. I liked him on his podcast when he was talking. Yeah, like or if he was on someone else's podcast, I would listen. Yeah. That's about the only time I was a real fan of his. But other than that, yeah, that dude's a. I guess a, I guess he was what what he fucking creepy. He anyways. was, and I, I haven't really followed because again, I wasn't a huge fan. So like when I heard he got, you know, I, anytime I hear somebody get me too now, this is all I do, right? If it's yeah. somebody that I, I'm really interested in, like when Cosby got me too. I'll, I'll investigate that and see, you know, Hey, what do I think about it? <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll probably know some, some facts, you know, but if it's somebody I don't really follow or don't really like, you know, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, no, you care about all that much. I really just check to see if it's legit or not. And I guess what he was doing from what, I, and this is, I don't know the facts, facts. I guess he was like propositioning, like, 16 or 15 year olds i don't know about 15 i don't know how young these chicks were but under 18 i guess but i mean and just a, let's just be honest like there's a lot of folks out 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 here specifically in hollywood that that are into that type of thing that's that's, um, a, that's why they call it hollywood it's yeah i mean it's not you know i don't think it's anywhere like you know 30 percent or but if you told me it was 10 percent, i wouldn't bad an I eye to it yeah, yeah i wouldn't be surprised at all but you anyways know. but chris delaney was on the set list there he's there oh yeah well he was walking around oh, um wow. and mark Marin and the sklar brothers were there and so you know you sklar think brothers. you're like you know you think you're like big time you know <laughs> and, and i actually i either tweeted out or facebooked out at the time i said if you if you still have an ego after you go to the comedy store you know then you're delusional you're that you know, has to be you're, very humbling very quick oh yeah yeah you know you're yeah you're not you're you're not shit yeah, the, uh, scar, the scar brothers are from st louis yeah 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 They're, they come here all this they, I, we, every time they, i've seen them once here love awesome. their I, I love their show when we were in the navy they had that great show cheap seats 
on yeah. uh, ESPN two. Yeah, it was fantastic. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was all, that was fantastic. I think they do a podcast around that now or something like that. They probably do. Yeah, they're they're, they're really good. I like. Yeah, they're I like fantastic. Them. Like nice guys. So. So what room did you? Uh, got a man. I'm gonna ask what room. What room did you do? What was the first room? You oh, did the in? show that we are uh, uh, that you do. And we're, we're gonna start doing. Well, they're they're doing it now, but I'm I'm gonna get on it again. I just started mm-hmm. hanging out again. Um, <clears throat> it's a belly room. It's just a, a smaller room. room. Yeah, it's only like um, an eighty people. Eighty but, people are uh, like that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, and it's it's great when it's packed out, which it always is, you know. Uh-huh. Um, right now with the they still have massive restrictions on the COVID stuff, so um, it's still you know, uh, you can still hang out now, but it's just it's so. Hold on one second. Oh, you good? <clears throat> um, but it's still you know, it's cool. So, uh, yeah, like but like I was saying, the first time I did the store uh talking about my look uh the guy that that went up right before me was a white guy he's a sl- schlubby white guy uh-huh. and uh you know he talked about how he he looks like a a molester and all this stuff and blah, blah. And i'm sitting here i'm going up next you're like Fuck. i'm like God, bro dude. i i go right i was like yeah that guy looks like a molester and he just <laughs> just that line crushed i was like bro i can't like I can't drive past schools in LA. Like I like, yeah. I know what I look like. It sucks. Like you can imagine I, oh. how horrible it is on Tinder and Plenty of Fish. Uh, I basically right. just say like, "Hey, look, ladies. I'm not keeping the look because of you know. Yeah. I I know what it looks like. All right. I get it. I God would damn. I would like I wouldn't want a guy that looks like Dude. me." talking to me either i don't even like looking at myself in the fucking mirror ladies but it's strategic trust me, it's, it's strategic ladies and trust me you want to you want to attach yourself to me trust me I, I assume if i get this role it'll probably be easier to convince them that it's strategic yeah. uh you, you know would, so one of two ways it's going to work out for you if you get the role they're going to understand why you look the way you do if you don't get this role you can at least go Fuck this shit and get rid of it all. I can at least, well, I I can at least grow the beard back. It looks yes. a lot better. It's a better look with the beard. Uh, the mustache is terrible. Um, nope. so, <laughs> but I have to keep the mustache until I find out whether or not you know they want me on this thing. Yeah, until so, we find out. Yeah, dude, I told you it would only be. I only take an hour of your time, man. I fucking greatly appreciate you coming on here. If you get the role or if you got anything else you want to fucking come back on here, Tim, you're always fucking welcome to come on here, man. I fucking appreciate it, man. You doing this, dude. Awesome. Thanks, man. It was really fun to catch up. Uh, if you talk to anybody from the ship, uh, tell them what's up. I talked to uh, about three people. I talked to Fred Salinas. I, I, and I just seen these three people. I, seen oh, Fred, I talked Sal- to Fred, yeah. Fred Salinas, Kelly Loper, and Bill Sheets. So oh, I used just, to live with used to live with Loper. Oh wait, not Loper. No, I used to live with Kelly. Oh, oh. You, you, oh, Frog. Yeah. Oh, dude, what? That was terrible. That what was, was okay? I Kelly. I do thank God you just said this. Me and Bill were just talking about this the other day because there's a story about this that guy, and I can't tell it. I'll have to switch it all up. Oh, I heard he did something weird, right? No, <laughs> I'll tell you as soon as I start the record button. I'll tell you the story. What yeah, yeah. I never, I never knew fucking Frog's first name. Oh yeah, uh, his name's Tyler, I think. Tyler Kelly. I have no idea what that dude's Isn't first that name. Is a weird was. name for a guy that looks like that? God damn, dude, what a weirdo! All right, and dude, I'm one to talk. But... Dude, dude, you ain't got shit on him. All right, right. uh, tell everyone where you're at, man. Where they can follow you, where they can see you. Uh, follow, follow me like at Tim Mathis Comedy on Twitter. Uh, I I tend to get a little political on there, but I hate both parties. I'm more anti-war than anything else. Um, I'm on Twitch. Speaking of, listen, I, if, if I want to plug anything, this is what I want to plug. I want to plug Friday the 13th, the game on PlayStation 4. It's the greatest game ever made, and it's cheap as shit. Um, it costs like anywhere from uh, $5 if you have like certain discounts up to $20. Uh, play that and watch me play that on uh, Twitch. EW Viper. EW Viper. And uh, what else am I? Uh, Instagram at Tim Mathis Comedy. That's where I do most of my uh, promotion for comedy stuff. 
Um, so if you're in the LA area, if you're in California area, I'm at Flappers Comedy Club uh, on uh, August 7th, which is next Saturday, 7.30 p.m. And if you're in Corpus Christi, Texas, or anywhere around there, I'm at, uh, and they haven't given me the club name yet, I'm sorry, but I'm doing a show there. So follow me and you'll uh, know more about that. The show is the last weekend in August. Um, and that's it. And uh, yeah, that's about all. All right. Oh, everyone that's watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Appreciate Keep your it. fingers crossed that we get the spot. And if we get the if we get the roll, it'll be a big deal, guys. And uh, you you all will be the first to know. I'll uh, uh, I'll let the podcast know right after I announce it. Dude, that's fucking awesome. I'm fucking praying for you, dude. I hope it works out for you, man. All right, man. Everyone, thanks for watching. Bye. All right.